Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And as you know, everybody, everywhere is talking about the coronavirus. And the do's and the don'ts and the wash your hands and all. However, however, most people don't talk about, all they say is that seniors, people like me, the, uh, what do you call these people, the, the uh, what am I talking about here? White hair, people with white hair. They talk about me and, oh, we got to do this with seniors and seniors and seniors. Well, let me tell you, I'm 82. So everybody my age went through the Depression and World War II. But we know about this. This is familiar. We're in familiar territory. We remember that food was rationed. We remember that we had curfews and that you had to pull down the curtains at a certain time. But as child, and then we didn't have television. We didn't have computers and all the gadgets. But seniors my age understand. They know they survived. They know they got through it. However, today we are going to talk to a specialist Martha Copeland, who is, as you know, she's a friend. She's been on the show before. Martha is a specialist. And what she's going to talk to us today about the things that seniors need to plan for, not be victims of, plan for to get through this time. So, Martha, welcome. I am always happy to have Martha on the show. So, aloha, Martha. <laughs> Thank you, Marsha. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. I am so excited <laughs> about being able to share this information that I think will definitely help people in your age group that you mentioned, or any age group, actually, because many of us love and see and care for uh, our, our parents, our grandparents, uh, who may be of a certain age. But I just want to just comment um, I didn't live through um, those times that you did where you said, you know, we will make it. But I did hear stories from my grandparents, and they did tell me about rationing and uh, long lines. But everybody, I believe, drew closer together. And, and there was much, much more sharing and people who had a lot of sympathy and, and for, for one another. So anyway, with that... I'm hoping to share some interesting things um, to help people uh, during this crisis to understand there are some new programs that have been approved to help people who have Medicare and Medicaid. But first, uh, tell us what the difference is in Medicare and Medicaid. So many sure. people get that confused. So what is Medicare? Uh, absolutely. Medicare is the insurance program that if you've been working and contributing by paying your Social Security taxes or your Medicare uh, taxes, when you reach that magical age of 65 or any age with certain disabilities, you qualify for Medicare insurance. It's a government uh, insurance. It's, it's managed by the federal government, and it consists of a couple different parts that take care of of your hospital, your medical doctor visits, and your prescription drugs. Medicaid, on the other hand, is different. That's if you happen to have income that has fallen to a certain level, and then you qualify for help with your insurance from whatever state you may live in according to the programs they provide. So Medicaid is from the state. Medicare correct. is from the state. Is that correct? Correct. And you've been paying into your Medicare taxes for your Medicare insurance. And most people don't know this, but if you work for about 30, 35 years, it's easily you've contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars. And Medicaid, of course, is funded through taxpayer dollars. From the state? Yes. Okay. All right, so now that we have new plans, let's tell us about the new plans. Right, so what I'm so excited to talk about is um, a lot of people are sharing that 
you know, we need to wash hands and we need to, you know, use a disinfectant and things like that. But people aren't really, and, and I'm so happy to report that I've heard that many stores are allowing the seniors, people 60 and over, to go early and shop so they don't have to be, you know, in, you know, possibly around people who may be carriers of the virus, which I think is wonderful, really making our stores, you know, Kapuna friendly as they try to avoid contracting this virus. But there's some other things that I think have not been spoken about. What if you happen to be the caretaker for a loved one that's over 60 and they need to go to the doctor on a regular basis? If you're supposed to avoid going out, how can you do that? Well, Medicare, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, they have some emergency powers that just went into place. So the very first one, this is an interesting one. Doctors do not need to be licensed in your state to provide services. Doctors do so not need to be licensed. Telemedicine, but not just telemedicine. Telemedicine is, you know, where you can see a doctor using the telephone or your smart device or an iPad or laptop or desktop. <laughs> but typically you are restricted when you have insurance to use maybe doctors in a particular service area. So by allowing doctors who are not even licensed in your state to provide services, that allows you to have more access to doctors. So not just maybe doctors that would be available to you who are just licensed in the state of Hawaii, right? So maybe I want a, a doctor over at Stanford in California. So anyway, it looks like um, this ruling, doctors do not need to be licensed in your state to provide services. This is opening up more providers to be able to take care of us because you can only imagine how if phone lines get tied up, if, if uh, you know, if you can't reach one of the telemedicine doctors, well, that's great that Medicare and Medicaid will cover telemedicine, but what about access to doctors? So by lifting the rule that doctors need to be licensed in your home state, that's thrown out the window. So hopefully this will give more access. But I think that's astounding. I, I can't that imagine is, that being lifted, right? That is wonderful. Yes. That is and absolutely then, wonderful. Yes. And then, Marcia, this is another one I get all the time. People tell me, oh, Martha, when I transition to Medicare, I don't think doctors like to take Medicare. Nobody will take me. I can't find a doctor. So another emergency uh, ruling from Medicare Doctors who may have been enrolled as Medicare doctors but decided, whatever reason, not to take Medicare or to let their registration lapse, they are allowing them to immediately, immediately re-enroll for uh, the temporary authorization to be able to bill Medicare for services. They're also waiving the application fee. Normally, somebody has to do a site visit they're waiving the site visit, they're waiving the application fee, and on a temporary basis, they will re-enroll that doctor or medical provider into the Medicare program so they can fill. Now, okay, let's do this really slowly. So okay. like, this is important. This is very important. Let's okay. do that again. Now, okay, if I say, Martha, my doctor that I like doesn't take Medicare, so what do I do? Now, so if that doctor is willing, that doctor willing. can apply for a temporary authorization to be able to bill Medicare without the normal credentialing process, which includes an application fee, a site visit, and I'll also say criminal check. But all, all of that is waived and that doctor will be able to get a temporary authorization to bill Medicare. Okay, so does the doctor know that or do I have to tell him that? Uh, this is all brand new. I think you might have to tell the doctor because <laughs> this is okay. brand new. But if they were to check, they would find out that this is in place. This is an emergency uh, measure uh, specifically for folks who are on Medicare. Wonderful. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so, fabulous. 
And it doesn't stop there. It's oh, this is just I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't know this going right through, but I'm so excited. Durable medical equipment. Durable medical equipment. That's your wheelchairs, your walkers, your canes, uh, things that you need, maybe a hospital bed, things that you can normally get with your doctor's prescription through durable medical equipment providers. Normally, if you need to replace something, if it's been lost, if it's been destroyed, if it's worn out, you have to go through a couple of hoops to get the replacement. So what right. the guidance is from Medicare to durable medical equipment providers is you still need an explanation of why the person needs it replaced, but because we are limiting or eliminating face-to-face, -face, that was a requirement for certain things, so they're waiving the requirement for there to be a face-to-face -face interaction with that durable medical equipment provider in order to replace that equipment. So again, if you need a replacement, something's worn out, they want you to feel free to contact your durable medical equipment provider, and you still have to have an explanation as to what happened to uh, this particular uh, device you used. But the durable medical equipment providers are being told, go ahead and provide it. Don't require the person to come down and do a face-to-face -face and, and explain. So I think that's, oh, that's huge. That is wonderful. That is exciting. That is huge. But there's more. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm so Bye. happy. There's so much negative news, and there's so many people who are, are panicking. And I, 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 and I guess the news constantly is making us more panicky. I have people calling me. I'm generally very calm. I'm starting to get <laughs> panicky uh, <laughs> because I, I'm no, concerned no, about is, people. This is really exciting. This is really yeah. exciting. Right, and my panic is, is, is not, I mean, I just have faith, but I, I'm concerned about people trying to go to get this COVID-19 uh, test and they wait for hours and then are turned away. And I don't, that's what I'm, I, I'm trying to like tell people, please make sure you check before you do that because I don't want people to get more, you know, run into another problem trying to get something that might not be available to them because there's only so many tests that are provided each day. So uh, let's, anyway, but let's I have uh -huh. why, real quick, why would I, just because I'm old doesn't mean that I need to get a test. So wh why should, what, what as a senior, uh, just because they're scaring us to death, right. but as a senior, why should I get a test if I'm Fine. I don't have the sniffles. I don't have a fever. I've had all my pneumonia shots, all of the things. Do I still have to go be tested? Well, ex exactly. I think that people are believing that, that they want to rule out whether or not they have it. But the bottom line is even if you were tested, you still have to practice washing your hands, uh, you know, not traveling, not taking cruises, even if you find out you are, you know, positive, if you don't have any symptoms, there'll be not a whole lot for you to do. So I think it's more important for people to understand if you wait on a line for three hours and you get turned away, did you put yourself in harm's way where maybe there was no harm? So we don't want to do more harm to ourselves by you know, panicking and thinking that we have to do something that may not be necessary. We are hearing that a number of uh, you know, uh, basketball players are testing positive, not showing symptoms, but testing positive. So they just have to sit and wait. You know? So you seek care when you, know, you have a temperature, uh, shortness of breath, uh, dry cough. There are some specific things that you need to do. Now, just so everyone knows, if you haven't heard, the temperature that you need in order to, along with the other symptoms, for your doctor to be able to order a test for you is 99.6. Why oh, am I pointing it. this out? It's nine. Yes, they did drop it. It was 100 and something. Mm -hmm. I had a, a friend, and she she stood in line for four hours, oh. and her temperature was 99.4, so she didn't get the test. So 99.6, and it changes all the time but 99.6. Oh, 
Okay. So, so very now, important. Should I call first before I go? Should I call? If I Absolutely. Go to my regular doctor or to urgent care, which has the drive through. Do Absolutely. You, you have to call first because you can go if you show up without an order. No one has prescribed it. Um, as far as I know, there's no way you'll be tested if you just say, I want to test. It's not working that way. So it's very important to reach out to a provider. That's why I'm so excited about the telemedicine. If you're able to, you know, Medicare says they'll pay. So if you're able to get a, you know, a physician through telemedicine, then you may be able to get an order for a test. And then you still have to call, but at least you show up with the doctor's prescription for ordering the COVID-19 test for you. Okay, so you must okay. have a doctor's prescription or okay to get the order. Test. Yes, correct. That's correct. So you can't just show up. Correct. If the doctor has some doctor has to say, right. I think that you may be, maybe this would be good for you. Yes. Right. And even if it's a doctor, if you show up and you're able to see, be seen. So yes, if, if even if it's not your own doctor, if a doctor decides that you should have the test, you know, you have the test, but it's not you deciding that you want the test. That's not yeah. how it's going to work. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. You got to have symptoms and you got to have a, a professional, uh, you know, uh, triage you and make that determination. So the other thing that I'm really super, super excited about, okay, we already talked about the doctors uh, do not need to be licensed in the state. Um, they, there's a way for them to, to, to get a temporary authorization to bill Medicare if they're not a Medicare provider. So this next one is a real doozy. Normally, when you are, are needing skilled nursing care, skilled nursing care, skilled nursing facility, that means you need things that are medically necessary, but you don't need to be in a hospital. Normally, the requirement is you need to be in the hospital for three days. They are waiving that requirement. What they are waiving? Yes, so you they are waiving. Because I think you had a friend who was in a situation like that, right. and uh, and this has been waived as a result of COVID nineteen. So so this is all new stuff. That's why it's important to know and important to talk to your provider in case they they're so busy with other things they don't know um, these new things that have come down for, from CMS. And then I got to tell you, Marsha, the benefit of all times that I, I can't even believe this one. I have it in writing. So if anybody wants to contact you to get it, <laughs> we can get it to them. But if you're normally, let me tell you how, let me first tell you how Medicare skilled nursing facility benefits work. Well, first of all, again, you don't determine if you need skilled nursing facility. This is a doctor who has determined that you need things that are medically necessary but you don't need to be in the hospital. So Medicare typically covers 100 days per benefit period. So a skilled nursing facility benefit doesn't go on forever and ever. It's 100 days, okay, 100 days if you have original Medicare and even in many um, uh, Medicare Advantage plans. Some other plans will give you a couple more days, but 100 days is the Medicare benefit. Now, if you exhaust those 100 days, a 101, you're out of pocket if you feel you still need to stay at skilled nursing. And how do I know this is true? Masha, I have a doctor right now. Her husband exhausted his 100 uh, 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 skilled nursing facility days. She thought he needed more. She's paying 22,000 a month, um, you know, oh. because he exhausted his days. So how do you get a new Medicare benefit period? Well, after you have been in skilled nursing for 100 days, you would you need to be discharged or pay on your own. But to get that benefit to reset, you have to be discharged from a skilled nursing facility for 60 consecutive days. Oh, dear. 60 consecutive days. And then prior to this new change I just mentioned, you normally would need to be in the hospital again for three days before you get that new benefit period. But as a result of, again, Medi Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, I'm so impressed with these emergency measures specifically for Medicare and Medicaid beneficiaries. 
if you have recently exhausted your skilled nursing facility benefits, they are going to allow you to start a new benefit period without the wait. Oh, great. So you don't have to move. You don't have to be discharged. You don't have to move. Right. So, so the reason I was so excited about today is because people are, are talking about, you know, if you have a mask, wear a mask, get your disinfectant, wash your hands. But what about a loved one that's in a skilled nursing facility and they're coming up on their 100th day? You've been told that your loved one must be discharged or you pay 100%. Not allowed. It's being waived. It's being okay. waived. So they are allowing a new benefit period. But because our, and I got to tell you, we got to all be very thankful for our frontline healthcare professionals, social workers, everyone. We have to be so thankful for them. But they have been so deep in the trenches, we, they may not know about these rules. So if anybody does run into a problem, they hit up against the wall, their person is being discharged in the midst of this whole COVID-19 crisis, now they can go back and say, check the rule. Medicare just introduced an emergency measure that the benefits don't exhaust at 100 days you will continue to allow them to have a new benefit period of 100 days. Again, it has to be now, is this online? So, I'm sorry, is this online so everybody, if they say, well, I heard Martha say, so is this online that they can download I, it, walk in with it in their hands? Absolutely, I know it. Yes, I know it almost sounds too good to be true. You should have seen me reading it. But it's on the CMS Center for Medicare and Medicaid. It's on the CMS website. So it's called COVID-19 Emergency Declaration Health Care Providers Fact Sheet. COVID-19 Emergency Declaration. That is fabulous. Oh, um, it is just so fabulous. Yes. This, this is wonderful because the people in this category, my over tsunami category have paid into this system for years, absolutely years, and to be penalized at this age is cruel. Yes, and yeah. especially during this crisis, everybody's speaking to things that, who's speaking to people who has a loved one about to be up against the 100 day, you know, you know, benefit period under Medicare for skilled nursing, uh, what about somebody who has a worn out wheelchair? You know, so look at these things that they can get now. So with knowledge comes power. So they have the power to get our loved ones these very vital services at such a time as this. Uh, this is this is really fabulous. I, I'm so excited to talk to you. And now these are new, but tell us about the old things, the things that we should know and probably have forgotten. And that's about being at home. What, well, what, what do the seniors need to think about or in uh, my daughter or whatever has yes. become to yeah. make sure that we are taken care of yeah. at home. The, the main thing, and it's the reason that I'm coming to you remotely, <laughs> I, uh, I, I had a trip to Kauai and um, I live on Oahu. However, if I return home because I need to take a flight, um, after I left for Kauai, um, both my husband and daughter were told by their companies that if I come home, they have to self-quarantine and they cannot go to work. So who would even think that those kinds of things can happen? So it's very important uh, for a kapuna, like if a, 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 one of your adult children were to, to fly in to take care of you, it's a really good idea that they quarantine themselves, even if it's the same household, for 14 days, because you don't want them who may have been exposed to expose you to COVID-19, because even if they don't have any uh, symptoms, they still could be carrying. So what you want to do, we want our loved ones, we love them, we want people to come to help us out, but make sure you quarantine for 14 days. And you can quarantine in the home, 
you know, you just, you know, make sure that you're not using the common bathroom, you know, and, and, and the common, some of the common rooms uh, just for 14 days. And then if the person has just traveled from the other side of the island, then um, they are telling us, of course, in Hawaii, we want to hug each other and we want to touch, but we are really being told to, to try to stay at least six feet apart. Six feet yeah, apart. One of, you know, one of the things we do is called aloha, and we touch and we feel and we share, and that's just who we are. So this is mm -hmm. difficult. Yes, this is difficult. Really difficult. Now, this is difficult. one of the things I'm going to add here, so I'm, I'm going to need your help. Dr. Oz, who I have absolute faith in, says we should walk in the sun and get the vitamin D. So, yes. Okay, so now if I am the caregiver and I need to take this person out so that they get the vitamin D in the sun, or mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes, whatever. Uh, now, the, my, the, as the caregiver, what are my responsibilities in being sure that I'm not bringing anything in and out? Right. Um, uh, you know, we don't know. Um, there's still a lot of unknowns. But what is a really good idea is when you go out, uh, change your clothes and put them in the wash right away and then take a shower. And if you're responsible for someone, uh, bathe them when they've been out on the outside. Um, there's also new guidance in terms of how long the virus can last on plastic, on uh, metal. So those are the guidelines that you can look at too. But uh, I'm, I'm, I, it's my understanding that we should also uh, not just wash our hands, but wash our clothes uh, when we come in from the outside. But I do believe I'm not a healthcare professional, um, but I do think the sun is uh, it's a good thing, and I hope there's some sun in Kauai soon. <laughs> right now we have rain. <laughs> yeah. No, but but I, like I said, I, I have faith because one of the reasons I think, and I'm, I'm not a professional either, but I think that certain climates are not as affected by this virus. If you look at the world map and you'll see them as an area there, and it's because we get sun. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. There's certain certain areas on that map, the world map, which is scary as hell when you look at all yes. the places that are affected. But there's certain, yes. most of them in the Caribbean islands and us, are not heavily impacted. Uh, and I think it has to do with vitamin D. You it's know. a very real possibility. And uh, that is a, a, a measure that I was low a few years back. So. My healthcare professional told me up my vitamin D, and I did. Uh huh. So, so we have it naturally. The sun is natural. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, the sun is natural. What about, now, I did make an appointment to go tomorrow morning at five o'clock to Food Lamp because they from five to six a.m. tomorrow morning, especially wow. the season. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, when in other you hear people hoarding, but what about medications for seniors that are shut in? About yes. Um, I heard one place delivers, but medicine. Uh, do we really need to stock up the 90 days? Can they just do a regular? Uh, seniors should do the 90 days. Uh, they should reach out to have their doctor call uh, the pharmacy uh, for a mail order, so they can even get either get it through the mail or get it delivered. Absolutely. You should do the medications for 90 days and a couple reasons. We don't know that we're going to start to see shortages of medication. So it's not oh. so much that you want your hoarding or, you know, you think this won't resolve. Even if it resolves in a month, there may be shortages. And you mentioned when you started the show that you remember shortages. Yeah. Uh, the only shortage I remember is the oil shortage in the 70s, but I, <laughs> I don't go back before that. So what if there's shortages? So if you get your medication again, we want to keep everybody calm and at peace, so we don't want people finding out that maybe their medication is is on back order and not available. So I encourage people definitely take advantage mm, of that 90-day supply. So you can ask to have it mailed to you or they deliver somehow. Right, certain, uh, certain pharmacies uh, deliver, 
and then certain uh, uh, insurance plans uh, will put you on the uh, mail order, and that would be delivered through the mail. And I even have had people who have a medication that needs to be kept cold, you know, uh, or at a certain temperature, and they have special trucks that arrive with that, with uh, the, the medicine in, uh, in, in temperature-controlled trucks is what I'm trying to say. So I, I encourage people to take advantage of all of those things. Absolutely. Well, is there anything in your mind, any special new thing, that we absolutely need to know that we need to repeat so people really understand in the few minutes we have left? You know, Marsha, I think that people should remember to continue to hydrate. It's my understanding that a dry mouth uh, it's not good for, you know, any kind of virus that you should hydrate, you know, make sure you're drinking your fluids, uh, make uh, sure that um, you're flushing this stuff out, make sure you're breathing deeply, uh, be calm, take the deep breaths so you can expel anything that might not belong, just try to expel it out of your system. And, uh, and, and I, you know, I believe in prayer. <laughs> so uh, I've been sending prayers to folks. Uh, letting them know that there's a, you know, you can, we, like you said at the beginning, we will, this too shall pass. We'll get through this. Hopefully we'll find that we have friends that we never knew we had. Uh, we, and, and some people we thought we could count on might not be well enough to take care of us. So we may find ourselves with new friends. And I'm thankful, Masha, that you are my friend. And thank you for allowing me to be on the show today. I really wanted to give this information uh, to my Ohana. Well, this is a real pleasure to have this, and I am, I, I got to give kudos to Think Tech. All day, all of the shows have been dedicated to the coronavirus and different aspects. And so this is a very special part because I haven't heard anybody talk about in depth about this and especially about the new thing that Medicare and Medicaid are doing. Uh, and instead, they're scaring old folks there. So I'm glad that you put it at ease, making seniors feel cherished and wanted, because we have come a long way across the miles, you know. Oh, yes, make them absolutely. Feel for so this is wonderful, absolutely Thank wonderful. And Thank you. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. And of okay. course, we'll come back because we have always have more to talk about. This thing is moving so fast. The yes, it is. Whole worldwide uh, pandemic is moving so fast that by the time next week we'll have something new to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I, and I'm, and my eye is on the prize. I'm keeping track of everything for our. Uh, Medicare, Medicaid community. Listen, before we go, uh, do you have a contact number that you would like to give out so people can call you? Or Sure. So I have a toll-free number that people can call because I'm getting a lot of calls. That number is 800-226-3660. That's 800-226-3660. And uh, I will call people back. I, uh, my my receptionist takes the call, and uh, and I and I call back. Oh, wonderful! And and so you are so easy to talk to, so they shouldn't be afraid to call you. No, I, yeah. I love this stuff. It it actually makes my day when I have an opportunity to share anything about Medicare and Medicaid that can make people's lives easier. It makes my day. <laughs> so it makes me smile. <clears throat> Yes, and and that makes it all the difference in the world when you pick up the phone to call somebody and you don't know where you're going or what you're doing, and to hear a pleasant voice on the other end makes all the difference in the world. Exactly, so, exactly, yeah. and and that's what I I, I I love. It's just conversational. <laughs> it's just friends. We're just friends. <laughs> yes. So, so we have one minute left. So repeat the contact number, please. Sure. Uh, people can reach me at 800-226-3660. That's 
3660. Martha, thank you. As always, it's a pleasure spending this time with you. Stay dry over there in Kauai. We just got <laughs> sun over here, so, you know. Okay, I hope to be back soon. Okay. okay. Aloha. Aloha. And we will see you next time. Stay safe.